YouTubers beware. Beginning December 10th, your channel could be removed, access revoked, and effectively banned at the sole discretion of YouTube, which of course is owned by Google. A new terms of service was sent out by the video platform just a few days ago, and in it, there's a line that reads, YouTube may terminate your access or your Google account's access to all or part of the service if YouTube believes in its sole discretion that provision of the service to you is no longer commercially viable. Ominous words there. So for more on this, let's turn to investigative journalist Ben Swan. Okay, Ben, so that yeah. sounds kind of sketchy to me. It's very sketchy. Uh, YouTube gets to be the sole decision maker, or in the words of George W. Bush, you know, the decider, right. uh, on whether or not someone's channel can stay up. Sure. But Which they've always been. How do they how do they define though commercially viable? Well, that's what's interesting about this. The terms of service, and by the way, um, YouTube had sent out an email to content creators uh, previous to this <laughs> that kind of laid out some of the new terms of service. This was interestingly omitted from that email. It was not included in there. And so now that it's been spotted, you know, it's getting a lot of attention and YouTube's like, ah, it's not a big deal. It's a very big deal. And the reason it's a big deal is because essentially what YouTube is saying is that if your channel does not make money we can take it down because we can't advertise on it. Okay, that's the first issue. But the second issue is, and this is what no one else is talking about, is that YouTube has been on a mission essentially for the last couple of years of demonetizing yes. channels, right? Mm -hmm. They don't outright ban channels, but they demonetize them, essentially saying that the content on your channel is not suitable for advertisers. Well, when you start getting those little flags on your on your um, channel that essentially say that your content, and by the way, my channel constantly gets these, oh. that, that yours, your content is not suitable for advertisers, not because it's violent, not because it's hateful, but because you talk about things that maybe their mainstream Someone advertisers like. like pharmaceutical companies sure. might not like, now you're not suitable for advertisers. Well, now they've taken it a step further to say, and this is the way I'm reading this, if your channel was not suitable for advertisers, then we can take it down. We're just going to delete it completely. So, uh, like you said, uh, uh, they're saying, oh, it's not a big change. Uh, a YouTube spokes spokesperson right. claims essentially that, that they're just making these tweaks to the TOS. They're not changing the way the platform works or how they collect data uh, or changing any settings. True. But this broad language, you know, provides an opportunity, Ben, for them to clamp down on free speech, doesn't it? Well, it absolutely does. And, and they're right when they say we're not changing any, you know, uh, access to the site. We're yeah. not really changing any of the rules. It basically you operates the way it always has. But what they are changing is the expectation. And here's the expectation. When YouTube came along years ago, over a dozen years ago, <laughs> yes. uh, the, the early adopters of YouTube were people who would go on there and say, look, I can't create content in order to you know, put this on broadcast television. Right. That's why it was called you. To, <laughs> right. right. The whole idea was right. you can create a channel and you can create right. content. Everybody it can be funny, can be... Ser silly, serious, whatever it is. Yeah. And you can you can make these channels. What's interesting is since Google has bought it and and the kind of the process Google has been in now for some time, um, not only do they significantly restrict channels, but they also have terms of service that make it increasingly difficult for content creators to to create anything at all. So you have these, these certain channels, right? If you have over a hundred thousand subscribers to your channel, you can go to YouTube's studios and you can shoot your, your shows or your podcasts from their studios. But wow. a lot of these new content creators don't have the ability to grow channels the right. way that they used to. And so they, it is, the whole thing is gamed specifically for larger channels with large followings who, who right. create the kind of content that YouTube likes. They like gaming content, they yeah. like makeup tutorials, they like, you know, game, uh, like fun, silly stuff, anything serious. Anything newsworthy, yeah. anything that challenges the status quo, YouTube yeah. wants it gone. They like that little boy that does all the, the toys. Yeah. Ryan. Kids, kids who open boxes. They, and like, they, they like love Ryan. that stuff. Yes. Uh, now, back to the same argument that you and I have discussed over and over about yeah. Facebook, about YouTube. That's right. Is it a publisher? Or is it something else? Right. Well, is it, a, is it a publisher or is it a platform? If it's a platform, then you don't have the right to remove everyone from your platform, right? You are creating the platform. And, and I think you can make an ethical argument that says, even if you are a platform mm -hmm. and someone is creating content that is not commercially viable, the terms of service for YouTube have never been, can you make us money? Yeah. Essentially, what you're saying as YouTube now is, 
that not only are we the lords of this space, <laughs> right, but we're essentially creating a tax system, a taxation system, mm. where if you create content that we deem as worthless or not valuable to us, we'll remove you and make room for someone else. Who does it harm for a content creator to be on there and not be able to make money? Right. What if hard? you're another five-year-old that's not Ryan right. and is opening, unboxing yeah. presents or whatever? And, and people don't watch your videos. Like, and what does that cost YouTube? It doesn't cost YouTube anything. So what this really is about, it's not about the people who are unboxing or who don't make money. It's about, it's about the next step in the demonetization yeah. strategy that says, first we demonetize um, information yeah. that we don't like. And the next thing we'll do is say, you're not commercially viable, so it doesn't sound like they're politically biased. Yeah. And they remove you for that reason, when in fact, they're actually removing you because corporate overlords are saying <laughs> yes. to YouTube, Google. we want them gone. Yeah, it is always a slippery slope, and you and I are always talking about this. I feel like it's never going to end. Always waving the flag. I was going, wait a minute, that's that's, <laughs> that's not it. okay. Yep. Like, what if my kid wants to have a channel? Let him have it. Just let him, let him have it, YouTube. Yeah. All right, we'll leave it right there. Ben Swan, appreciate your insights. Thank you. Manila, thanks. Hey, YouTube, thanks for checking out our channel. We hope you enjoyed the video. We have tons of content for you just like this. For more of RT America's one-of-a-kind news and analysis, be sure to subscribe and never stop questioning more.